box loud Hitting that stuff, did you hear that sound? What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. So we're going to continue to work on my investment property here. The first kitchen out of three. And uh, yeah, the next two are much, much bigger. So it's going to get a lot more expensive as we go. But uh, yeah, this, this first kitchen, I mean, I've only been in this unit for a little over a year. And I've got every single room in this place one room at a time then just picking it off bathrooms done all the rooms are done and now we're just trying to finish up the kitchen here which the last couple of weeks we got all this unsavable horsehair plaster out insulated got a new drywall baseboard you know window trim new floor straightened the ceiling everything's painted refinish the floor there yeah it's been very very productive but now we got to tackle this so i priced out to put new cabinets uppers and lowers and a butcher block countertop i found a butcher block countertop at lowe's it's like 400 bucks it's 10 feet long and basically i was hoping that i could cut it and i, w I will have enough to do a small countertop over here with a small cabinet here but I priced all that out with brand new cabinets and he, like I looked into maybe doing the unassembled cabinets that come unassembled and you have to build them right but those weren't that much less all right well we got our list here came to Lowe's I don't know my opinion honestly I think Lowe's has better wood Home Depot has got better plumbing items and uh, better tools but Lowe's has better wood and they have better tiling stuff much better uh, so yeah I'm not gonna bring the camera in because last time I went into Home Depot video got demonetized because of a stupid audio clip that was playing. So I'm gonna run in, grab the wood, and then we're gonna go to the shop and get busy because we have a lot of shit to make today. All right, that took a little bit longer than expected, but we're here at the shop. Before we run in, uh, you know, the craziest thing, I'm I'm checking out at Lowe's and he, the dude, he's like five or six years younger than me. He, he, he rings everything up and it's like 420 bucks, which, I mean, if you think about it, it's not terrible. I'm going to refab, make all those cabinets look new and they're going to be solid, solid wood. And they're going to be indestructible. That's what I want with tenants. You need indestructible. Yes. I could have got cheap. They had these clearance cabinets that were like ikea style with the plastic legs and the in the clip on plastic clips to clip on the the toe kick no no it's like half inch uh particle board is what they're made out of and they're unpainted unassembled it would be just as much work i feel like to rip everything out build those cabinets install them all than it would be to just come to the shop make new doors and drawers and a cabinet and go just keep the carcass and i only paid like 400 bucks versus probably a thousand so and that that's for cheap shit cabinets if i wanted good cabinets we were looking at a lot more but we're checking out right and he says oh my god 400 bucks it seems like our money is, is is losing value so we started talking right and i could see his boss you know over the counter just giving me these these like demon eyes I mean, we, we weren't talking about politics. We were just talking about money. That's it. Right? So I said, yeah, well, do you, do you understand why our money is becoming worthless? And he says, no. And I says, because we need to go back to constitutional money. Constitutional money is a wealth, wealth-based system. Uh, what we're in is a debt-based system. And they're going to crash the dollar. The dollar will become worthless. And they're going to try to push us into a digital currency, which if they get their way, we're, we're done. We're doomed. There's no, there's no coming back from that. Things are going to get so bad if we go into that digital currency, it's not even funny. 
things are going to get really, really ugly. So we need to wake people up. We need constitutional money. That's what we need. And he's like, well, what is that? I'm like, you don't... I say, do you, I say, do you, do you know that the, the quarters, our quarters, our money, the quarters and dimes before 1967, I believe, they were 90% silver. And the pennies up until 1982 were copper. But after 1982, they took the, even the copper out of the pennies. And he says, well, what is it now? And I said, it's a bunch of cheap, shit, garbage, worthless metals i said all those coins are worth more than their face value a copper penny is worth more than a penny a silver dime is worth more than 10 cents and a quarter a silver quarter i think is uh, almost five bucks just one quarter and he's like oh i never even i never even thought i didn't even know He's like, I should buy some silver. And I'm like, yes, you should. And he's like, well, can I can I just buy like 200 bucks worth if I want? And I was like, yes, dude. You could go on to any of these Boolean websites and usually 200 bucks is the, the minimum and they'll give you free shipping so you don't have to pay for shipping. Or otherwise get over a thousand bucks worth and you don't have to pay tax. And he was like, well, what do you think is better, gold or, or silver? And I said, for you, silver. Do you have 2,500 bucks to spend on an ounce of gold? He's like, no. I'm like, well, then, yeah, you can you can afford silver at least, right? And it's, like, it's just crazy to me, man, that people have, so many people are just walking through life completely oblivious. They have no idea. They know things are bad and things are getting worse and people are starting to at least go, hey, what's happening here? And it, and it was good that he actually like asked me, you know, because uh, I feel like I just grabbed an individual that was just stumbling through life, working at Lowe's, you know what I mean? And I'm like, look into this stuff, look into it. I said, you can look up my YouTube channel. You know, we talk about it a lot there. Or there's a million other places you can go and learn, but I suggest you start learning. And he's like, "You're right. I'm gonna I'm gonna buy some silver." I'm like, "Good," because I think the more people that are educated, the better. But anyways, let's uh, pull this wood out and get started. All right, so I didn't end up going with uh, poplar because they didn't have enough, and Lowe's tends to have a better selection of wood. And actually, this was slightly less expensive. I did get pine, but this pine is from New Zealand and it is hard as a coffin nail and it's heavy. This is not like the same number one or number two pine that they sell at Home Depot. This stuff is actually harder. It is harder than poplar. I have a piece of poplar over here I was just comparing. This stuff is heavier. And it is harder because usually on premium cabinets they're made from this hard maple this stuff is extremely hard and extremely hard to work with and extremely extremely expensive so yeah that's not in the budget so we went with uh this new zealand premium pine which was a little less expensive than the poplar and now we don't have to worry about stain blocking paint like you do sometimes with poplar you have to use a stain blocking paint because the stains just keep coming through so we got one by threes for the door uh, perimeter we've got one by eight for the drawer bodies and then one by ten yeah one by eight one by ten and this will be for the drawer faces. Uh, and then we got MDF for the center panels of the doors. And quarter inch plywood here for the drawer bottoms. So that should be, uh, I don't know if we have everything we need, but I think we should be close. 
So I think what we're gonna start with is the carcass of the cabinet that's gonna go next to the stove. So then after that, you know, we're done with plywood, with all of that, then we can start on face frame and doors for this cabinet. And then while we're in door mode, you know, we'll make all the other doors and drawers for the kitchen cabinets that are at my house. So I think first things first, we're gonna dig out the plywood that I've been saving for just an occasion like this and make us a, a carcass for a cabinet. There we go. We've got our toe kick, two uh, brackets for the top to screw the countertop to. We've got the bottom, a shelf, the sides, the back. Let's put it together. Carcass cabinet for next to the stove. I had a little bit of scrap MDF, quarter inch. I ripped it down so that will get tacked on after everything gets plumbed and leveled. That just goes across the, the face for any gaps. So that's ready to go. And now we just need to make a quick face frame and then we can move on to doors for everything.
All right, and there's the carcass. It is done. Got all the pieces we need. Nice thing is being painted, so I did not have to be careful with nail holes. These are all gonna get filled and painted. Just made it a lot easier. Little overhang, beautiful, beautiful, done. I measured up for a door. We need 28 and a quarter tall by 12 inches wide, which will be a half inch overlay. So the door will hang over a half an inch on every single side. So we don't have to be perfect, exact. Overlay doors are easy, a lot easier. So I'm gonna throw this in the truck, get rid of it, and then we'll set up a whole nother batch of tools and start banging out doors. So under normal circumstances, if I was getting paid to do this job and the customer was looking for, you know, premium, I would, uh, I would buy bigger than I need and rip it down, plane it down to the size that I want. That way I can be sure that everything is exactly the same thickness and width. But honestly, this is just for my house. Cabinets aren't perfect anyways. Uh, and these are actually very, very spot on. These are really good. So these were all ripped down at the same time because these are, yeah, those are spot on. So I'm not gonna rip these down at all. It's gonna be two and a half inches. Usually I go with two and a quarter, but two and a half is fine. That should be dandy. So I think what I'll do is I'll start cutting styles and rails approximately. So 25 inches tall. Yeah, those ones I can cut exact. The other ones I kind of have to figure out so i'm going to cut everything close and maybe a hair bigger than i need and just make piles so i know i have all the styles and rails that i need and then put the rest of the wood to the side and then we'll set up for ripping the tongues and the grooves for the center center panels of the doors i like to do all of that all at once just rip them all all right so we got all of our doors cut extremely close they may need to be trimmed, I'm not sure. I think they should be close enough. That's why overlay is so much easier because if it's off by an eighth or a quarter here or there, it's, it's not gonna matter, dude, it's not gonna matter. But uh, yeah, each one of these piles is one door. So I don't wanna get these mixed up. These piles need to stick together. So I, I might actually number them. Like just do, uh, one, 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 and one. And then, two, 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 two. Right? Just like that. So that I don't mix mix them up. So those are ready. We gotta set up the uh, router table and the bits. We've got two scrap pieces of the same stuff so that we can use these to set up the router bits and make sure everything's spot on with a scrap piece. Uh, and then real quickly, just to finish up with the ripping and cutting and stuff, uh, this is the plywood bottom. I just ripped it down a little bit bigger than we need. We'll trim it down on site. That'll be the plywood bottom for the, you know, the kitchen sink cabinet because it's uh, kind of rotted. This is Baltic birch, probably a little overkill, but that's what we had. Uh, this This little rip here is for that little squiggly thing, we're gonna get rid of that and put this nice square piece in. And then I have a, a rip here of inch and three eighths. So basically the old cabinets have this, this, and this, but there's no, no piece at the bottom. It's an inset door and it just goes in. Seeing that we're doing overlay, we need to add this piece in on the old cabinet. So that's what this is. So we'll just cut it on site, nail it on, Bob's your auntie, especially these days. Uh, and then I have one extra. I'm gonna bring it home. You never know. Might be something I missed or overlooked. It's good to have uh, an extra piece. So I'm gonna now go put this stuff in the truck. Load this up, get it out of here. And we will commence making doors. All right, so this is a lesson I've had to learn the hard way. When you're setting up for ripping all of your tongues, I mean your grooves, sorry, your grooves. Uh, if, 
we're using a half inch MDF and it's gonna look like a shaker style. It's gonna be flat in the front and the detail's gonna be put towards the back. Cause I, I want nice, thick, beefy, you know. I don't wanna put just a quarter inch panel cause I feel like tennis will break that. So we're gonna go with half inch, but you need to make sure from the bottom, the bottom of the groove to the back side, which the top is the back side, the bottom is the front of the door. You need to make sure that you have a half inch or more so that that detail doesn't stick out past the back of the door because if there's a shelf that's flush with the face frame the door will hit the uh, shelf and the door won't close all the way so I might drop this a hair more and we'll call it good yeah it almost looks like it's not a, like you want to center it but no you do not see even even that if I line that up with the front, we're pretty much flush in the back. So that should do the trick. So here's our scrap piece. I'm gonna put that to the side. We already sent this all the way through, double checked. We likey. So now I'm just gonna turn this on and blast all of these through. All right, we got the uh, blade changed over. And then we gotta change it over one more time when we do the panels. So I like to do all of it all at once. So you don't have to keep setting, you know, these uh, these blades. They've got to be just barely touching that ball bearing across the fence. Then your height's got to be right, and that looks pretty good. So scrap piece passed. Now we just have to do these smaller ones because every single door here is taller than it is wide so we only have to do yeah the two smaller ones from each set the longer ones we don't need to do well I had all of these pretty much spot on I think there's one door that's a third it's a 16th too wide which don't care I can plane that off of one side doesn't really matter it's an overlay so those are all close. I didn't have to cut any of them down, just plop them in. The only thing is I'm getting a little bite right in the beginning. I do need to, uh, at some point, upgrade my sled and un you know end cutting abilities. Because they're not perfect, but it's fine because these are getting painted. And it's just my house, who cares? It's just a rental. Yeah, you can see that little, that little bite. Yeah, that'll get caulked and painted, not a big deal. But, uh, now we need our MDF panel for the middle. MDF is extremely stable. It's not gonna warp or twist. And that's, that's the thing I like about putting, if you're gonna paint it, put MDF as the center panel because it really helps keep things straight. You know what I mean? So now I flip, you know, flip it onto its back. I usually measure from the back because the front edge, yeah, it's got that little 45 or a little detail there. So I flip it onto the back where it's square. Something easy to measure off of. Put the frame together, measure from here to here, add three quarters. Because it goes in three eighths, three eighths. And if I go in three quarters, that's gonna leave about a sixteenth, so it'll be a 30 second gap on either side, if I was going to do space balls, which I'm not, the little rubber balls, you'd have to account for those and subtract those as well, but I'm just going to slam them in. Should be good. Yeah, look at that. That's what we want. So the back of the door. Yeah, see? It's either flush or this should be slightly higher. But flush is good. It looks like we are slightly higher, which is what we want there. All right, we got everything cut and cleaned because it completely bombs everything. That MDF is just uh, vicious. Viciously dusty. That's why I want to do this in the shop. A lot quicker as well. You got everything set up, ready to rock. Can work like a gentleman too standing up and not on my hands and knees 
So, yeah, I think we're just gonna start here, smallest door, use the smallest clamps we can, glue it up, make sure it's square, put it somewhere to dry, so on and so forth until all of these are glued. And then while these are drying, we can hop over and start working on drawers and drawer faces. Well, we don't have enough clamps, unfortunately, so I'm gonna have to let those ones set up a bit. I mean, if I let those set for like a, an hour or so, I should be able to gently pull those clamps off. And as long as I don't bang the doors around, that should be good. So I think we're just gonna slide this aside and start making some drawers. All right, we got all the drawers cut to size. I was actually one board short, uh, but luckily I had some one inch thick pine sitting over there, same size. So I'm just gonna make this one inch thick stuff the very back of the drawer. You know, maybe uh, give it some strength give it a little weight in the back of the drawer because there's going to be no hardware just the same as they are and i'm making these drawers actually deeper than they were before i'm adding like four inches because there's a lot of depth there so they are going to be bigger drawers slightly so i think uh i might glue up the last two doors real quick and then we need to start figuring out and ripping our little channel for our pieces of plywood to slot into and then we can start building some boxes all right we got our channels ripped it's basically just two passes on the table saw a blade and a blade equals that so it'll slot right into the yeah look at that so if this was my forever home and not just a rental that someone's probably gonna destroy anyway and doesn't give a shit. Um, probably, yeah, if it was my forever home, I'd definitely go with dovetails, right? Cause they're stronger and they look a lot better. But for this particular project, we're not doing that. We're gonna put glue and we're gonna put nails. But you wanna do it this way, nails in sideways, not in you don't want to go this way because then when you pull on the drawer yeah it creates problem but this way at least if you put the nails in that way and they're pulling on the drawer you see the nails are going that way and it's getting painted so it doesn't matter if there's nail holes and then we're going to make a drawer face that'll cover all this ugly and gray all right so i started nailing some together so i could measure you know, add three eighths for both sides and front and back. Then make some nice drawer bottoms. Pick the nicer side. Nicer side in towards the drawer. And slide that bad boy right into place. And now, glue and nail the back in all right there's our drawers bottoms what I did is I ripped down some little supports put a healthy bead of glue squished them in tacked it from the front and the back just so you know we have something else for the drawer to run on on these runners oh yeah and it just really helps make it feel a lot more solid inside. Yeah. Superb. So now we're gonna flip these over while we're in the shop. Grab out the smoothing plane, just flush up the tops, and uh, the rest will be just hand sanded at home. Well, I took the uh, 1 16th round over bit and just quickly broke all the edges on the top of the drawers. Just one last thing I gotta do later. And normally I wouldn't pop the uh, drawer faces on now. I would do that in place, but it's just a quarter inch overhang every side. 
If it's a little wonky, it's a little wonky. It's an old kitchen. Doesn't gotta be perfect, just gotta look fresh. All right, so the last thing we gotta do, which is probably too early to be doing this, is just take the plane and flush things up like that. Maybe just check over the faces, flush anything up, and then just take the 116th round over bit and just zip it around. And then we'll, uh, we'll sand, drill for hardware, and do all that stuff at the house. Yeah, as I thought, these are not dry yet. They're too big. So when I start planing and stuff, it just tweaks them and it's not worth messing them up. Plus a couple of them were kind of like tweaked a little bit. They didn't, they didn't go in the clamps, right? I didn't check it. I was just in a rush to get this done. So I had to put the, you know, flip the clamp to the other side and squeeze it. So now it's straight. And as I was squeezing it, more glue came out of the crack. So yeah, these are not done. Yeah, doors, drawers and the cabinet back there. Good, let's get out of here. What do you think, Duke? You like it? Starting to look like a kitchen? Yeah. I think that was necessary. I don't know, I still might put something above the stove, but for now, I feel like this was necessary. A little more storage, nice little door, stove, countertop, beautiful. But yeah, today was, today was great. I mean, it was a full day, it's four o'clock. I'm not done yet, but for the sake of the video, yeah, we, yeah, it was a good day. We got all the, all the parts, all the parts and pieces that we need are here to rebuild and refurbish this whole mess here. Except for the four big doors, I have to run back and grab those in the morning and grab door poles and door hardware and stuff like that. But from here forward, for the rest of this, uh, for the rest of this unit, really, I can kind of chip away and do it in my spare time. I don't need to take a, like a Saturday or a Sunday or whatever. The bulk of it is done, man. And see, here's this is what I'm after here, right? Oh, and I gotta grab some uh, anti-friction tape because I want to put anti-friction tape on the uh, the bottoms. So you see how we have a small gap there, small gap there. I figure we put some anti-friction tape on the bottom. That'll help fill that gap a little bit better. So these run a little bit tighter. And it'll be nice and smooth. And we don't have to worry about paint coming off or anything like that. But you see how fresh and clean and straight this all looks? Versus the old stuff. It's like, you can tell it's got wet in there many times and it just... Yeah, you see how jagged? There's like nails sticking out and it just looks crunchy. The amount of scraping and trying to get this paint off and reuse this, it's just way too much. But this, now with that there, you have nice clean straight lines. It looks fresh. And then we'll have a bunch of new doors that just give it, give it a facelift. And then, then all we gotta do really is just a lot of planing, sanding, body filling, and try to get the carcass as smooth and as nice as we can. And then I, I think between that and the new drawers and door faces, dude, this thing's gonna look amazing and it's solid wood. This is gonna take a beating. I mean, this has probably been here for 50, 60, 70 years already. And it's still fine, it just needs a little work. And yeah, I could have bought a cheap little cabinet for like 80, 90 bucks for right here. But it had plastic feet and it was half inch particle board. And it still would have needed to be painted. It came unfinished. 
and it was all particle board. Particle board and MDF. There was no solid wood. This is three quarter inch plywood all the way around, even the back. No plastic feet right to the floor. That is solid. That's going to take a beating. Yeah. That's what we're after. Longevity. Because again, like, if this was my forever home, you know, I was going to live here forever, I wouldn't be doing stuff like this. You know, we'd be doing dovetails and we'd be doing primo shit. But this is a rental. And tenants don't seem to give a shit. As long as it looks nice and functions nice, that's all they care about. And, uh, yeah. That's, if that's all they care about, that's all they care about. You know what I mean? As long as that wrench head comes in. So yeah, this should be, uh, this should be good. So I think I'm gonna cut the video here because, uh, yeah, the rest of this is gonna be pretty boring anyway. I'm gonna start priming all of this. Prime it, sand it, get finish coat on. And then I'm gonna start ripping this apart. Getting all these doors and drawers and get them out of here clear my stuff out and start scraping and doing all of that so next video that comes out will be uh you know uh, reassembling this whole beast right here putting in a new countertop sink tiling a backsplash adding a garbage disposal hacking the plumbing out putting some new pvc in with a pro vent so it drains correctly, getting rid of the uh, the old drum trap. Yeah, because there's a big freaking... Yeah, look at that big drum trap right there. Ooh, look at that. A lot of, a lot of copper bars. Look at that, yeah. There's copper all the way over there. Yeah, I'm going to turn my, my old shit pipes into uh, three nines fine pure copper bars, baby. At some point be yeah, anyways guys that's it for this one if you want to see what this all looks like keep an eye out for the next video make sure you subscribe give me a thumbs up see you in the next one